We're now on module 11.03, water's dissociation constant, KW and pH. So what I have here, are these our AP exam equations? Straight off the AP exam sheet. And they're in the equilibrium section. So we're going to go through a good chunk of these through the rest of this module. I get back to a blue pen. So what we're going to be looking at today or right now is this set right here. And so that's what we're going to be focusing on right now. So K water is H plus times OH minus. It's just taking the equilibrium expression for the dissociation equation that is shown here. We would omit water because it's a liquid. So we have this image here of two water molecules that are in equilibrium with hydronium and hydroxide ions. Our value for this, as you can see from this value right here, is very, very small, which means that very little of the water dissociates to form the hydronium or the hydroxide ion concentration. In fact, at 25 degrees Celsius, Kw is equal only to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Now, notice this is only at 25 degrees Celsius. So let's calculate the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide ions in pure water at 25 degrees Celsius. So we have that 1 times 10 to the negative 14th is going to be, and I'm going to abbreviate the hydronium H plus and OH minus. That is perfectly acceptable. Since we're in pure water, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. One-to-one, -one, okay? Which means that we can say that this would be X times X, where X is the same thing. And we solve and x is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh molar. And that is for the hydrogen ion, which is equal to the hydroxide ion. Now notice that it says here, what is the concentration at 25 degrees Celsius? And Kw is only good for 25 degrees Celsius. That equilibrium constant changes as temperature, con temperature changes. We know that that is possible. So here we're told that the ion product of water at 80 degrees Celsius is 2.4 times 10 to the negative 13th. Now we need to calculate the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide ions in pure water at 80 degrees Celsius. So same thing in terms of setup, but then in instead of one times 10 to the negative 14th, we have 2.4 times 10 to the negative 13th. And that's going to be equal to our hydronium and our hydroxide ion concentration, which is equal to X squared so X in this case is going to be equal to 4.9 times 10 to the negative seventh molar. And that is equal to our hydrogen ion concentration, which is equal to our hydroxide ion concentration. So let's, uh, let's think about what we're looking at here, just kind of a little bit of review. We saw that KW increased with temperature. In other words, increasing temperature favors the forward direction. which means that if we increase the temperature and the reaction goes in the forward direction, this must be an endothermic reaction because increasing the temperature favors it to go forward. Thus, the reaction is endothermic as written. As written means as written, one side being uh, the reactant, one side being product. So 
once again, just from refreshing your memory, you can analyze whether a reaction is endothermic or endothermic by looking at what happens to the value of Kw as you increase, or any equilibrium constant, as you increase temperature. Let's take a look at another type of reaction. The hydroxide ion concentration in a dilute base is 3.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. We want to calculate the concentration of hydrogen ion at 25 degrees C. So we look at our handy dandy equation sheet and we see that Kw is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. In other words, this is going to be equal to our hydrogen ion concentration times our hydroxide, which is 3.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. If we solve for hydrogen ion concentration, that is our uh, value of X, we get 3.1 times 10 to the negative 11th molar. So this brings us to the graph here that I have. A neutral solution, we can see that the hydronium and the hydroxide have exactly the same concentration. We just looked at a basic solution, and we can see that our hydroxide ion concentration is greater than our hydronium ion concentration. If we go to an acidic solution, the reverse is going to be true. All right, now what we're going to do is we're gonna calculate hydrogen ion concentrations and hydroxide ion concentrations in aqueous solutions of strong acids or strong bases. And I've got that equation up at the top where the Kw value is one times 10 to the negative 14th as long as you're at 25 degrees. All right, so our first problem. We make a solution of 0.010 molar HCl in water. What is the concentration of hydroxide ions? Well, we've got a strong acid, which means that the HCl is going to dissociate completely to H plus plus Cl minus. This means, that's what this little three little dot things means, that the H plus concentration final must be equal to the initial HCl concentration because the H HCl dissociated completely, which means it's 0.010 molar. So we just plug it into our equation. 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th is going to be equal to the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration and we plug in our value, 0.010, and we solve for hydroxide. And when we do that, our hydroxide ion concentration is going to be equal to one times 10 to the negative 12th molar. Next, we're going to look at making a solution of a strong base. So we start with 0.021 molar sodium hydroxide ion. And we're asked, what is the concentration of the hydrogen ions? So again, since this is a strong species, it's going to dissociate completely in water. So we have Na plus plus OH minus. Therefore, our initial sodium hydroxide concentration has to be equal to the final hydroxide ion concentration. So we have one times 10 to the negative 14th is going to be equal to 0 0.021 times the hydrogen ion concentration and our hydrogen ion concentration is going to be equal to 4.8 times 10 to the negative 13th molar. 
So anytime we have a strong acid or strong base, that we just make the assumption that the hydrogen or the hydroxide ion concentration equals the initial concentration. All right, this one's a little trickier and it's a question that students frequently get wrong because they don't pay attention to the stoichiometry. All right, we have aqueous calcium hydroxide. So although we don't call this a strong base because calcium hydroxide is not very soluble, everything that is aqueous is completely separated. So what we have is calcium hydroxide. And since it is completely dissolved, everything is going to separate. So I draw it as 100%. Notice that I am making two hydroxide ions. This is something that is frequently missed. So what I have is I have 0.0061. That's my initial concentration. And let's go ahead kind of like this is an, an ice table. So I have an I and then I have zero and zero. And my change, I'm going to lose all of this. And I'm going to get plus 0 0.0061. And I'm going to get two times that. All right, which means my final concentration is zero, 0 0.0061 and 0.0122. So when I go to plug in to my water constant, one times 10 to the negative 14th is going to be equal to the hydrogen ion concentration times 0.0122, which means that your hydrogen ion concentration is going to be 8.2 times 10 to the negative 13th. So again, what students frequently miss here is that if you have something that produces more than one hydroxide, you need to take account of that before you go plugging it in to your expression for KW. You did not need to do a ice table here. You could have simply gone, oh, okay, I'm gonna have twice as much of the hydroxide as I do of the calcium and filled in. Okay, so you're seeing underneath there the pH and pOH, a more convenient way to express hydrogen and hydroxide ion concentrations. That's gonna be the next thing we're going to do, but we're going to stop here for now.